Hey friends, welcome to another lesson with Miss G. Um, we are going back to one con continent in particular. Uh, can you guess which one? Learn about two so far. Ding, ding, ding. Maybe you got it, maybe you did it, and that's fine. We are going back to the continent of Europe. Here's Europe, friends. So Miss G spoke about Europe before. She spoke about when she went and all those things. Um, what do you notice about this map in particular? There's a lot of words, right? And there's a lot of lines. That means these are different countries. So all of this, all of this together is Europe, but each part of Europe is a different country and each country has its own language, has its own city, has its own um, buildings and culture. So Ms. G actually talked about it kind of last time when she said when she visited the different countries. Um, so now we're going to go to a specific country in today's lesson, which Ms. G has not checked out yet, and that is the country of Spain, okay? So Spain, we can watch some photos of Spain. Spain is a beautiful country in Europe, and it has um, lots of different old buildings. It has palaces, it has castles. Also, it's known for speaking Spanish. This country has Spanish as its main language. Remember, France has French, Sp Spanish, Spain has Spanish. <laughs> um, we basically all learn Spanish from the country Spain. We just know it a little bit different and we talk it a little bit different because times change things, that's all. So our new story is called The Story of Bernadette. Now, some of you might have read this already. Some of you might have seen the movie because there's a movie out for this. But we're still going to go through it because it could be a little bit different. Remember, sometimes you hear it one way and you're like, wait a minute, it happened a little different from when I heard it. Sometimes stories are told over and over again, like the three little pigs, like the three Billy Goats gruff. So we are going to pay attention to this so because it might be a little different from what you remember. Um, so this is called The Story of Fernadad and is by Monroe Leaf and drawings by Robert Lawson. Do you remember what drawings by means? I mean, yes, he drew it, but also what kind of a job is it? Is it the author? Mm -mm -mm. It is the illustrator. And what about by Monroe Leaf? What did he do? He's the author, right? And what does the author do? Writes the words. So Monroe Leaf whirled the words to our story. Looking at the front cover, friends, <laughs> what do you think this story will be about? Well, Miss G can think, hmm, I see a lot of flowers, so maybe this bull likes the flowers. I think that's a bull. So I'm going to say that's a bull and maybe it likes flowers. Also, hmm, it's called the story of Fernadad and it has a bull in front, so maybe it's about him. So let's see, friends. We have a video talking about our story. Today's Read Aloud is one of my favorite books. It tells the story of a young bull who would rather sit and smell the flowers instead of running and jumping with the other bulls. The Story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf, illustrated by Robert Lawson. Once upon a time in Spain, there was a little bull and his name was Ferdinand. All the other little bulls he lived with would run and jump and butt their heads together. So it said run and jump and butt their heads together. Looking at the illustration, what do you think that means? Well, I hope at home you're answering, but Miss G actually has it here. So this is a video of bulls butting their heads. Bulls can butt their heads when they are angry or upset. 
Sometimes bulls butt their heads when they're playing with each other. So I believe these are two bulls actually playing with each other and just pushing each other around. Just remember like when you were in recess, right? You guys would play around, push each other around. Sometimes get a little rough. So that's what these bulls like to do. They like to butt their heads. That's what we call it. But not Ferdinand. He liked to sit just quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. It was his favorite tree and he would sit in its shade all day and smell the flowers. Sometimes his mother, who was a cow, would worry about him. She was afraid he would be lonesome all by himself. Why don't you run and play with the other little bulls and skip and butt your head, she would say. But Ferdinand would shake his head. I like it better here where I can sit just quietly and smell the flowers. His mother saw that he was not lonesome. And because she was an understanding mother, even though she was a cow, she let him just sit there and be happy. As the years went by, Ferdinand grew and grew until he was very big and strong. All the other bulls who had grown up with him in the same pasture would fight each other all day. They would butt each other and stick each other with their horns. What they wanted most of all was to be picked to fight at the bullfights in Madrid. But not Ferdinand. He still liked to just sit quietly under the cork tree and smell the flowers. One day, five men came in very funny hats to pick the biggest, fastest, roughest bull to fight in the bullfights in Madrid. Sorry, friends. Had to make that a little clearer. All the other bulls ran around snorting and butting, leaping and jumping so the men would think that they were very, very strong and fierce and pick them. So there's another picture of the budding. There was something else they said that they did. And in this picture, they try to show you it. What else did the bulls do? Well, looking at the picture, maybe what we could see is like these lines coming out, right? And what do usually lines coming out in a picture mean? It means that there, there's air coming out or wind or something like that, right? So if we go, Miss G has a video <laughs> this is a bull snorting a snorting is when they make these sounds that make them sound like they're upset to intimidate to show people that they mean business so they do this with their hooves and that shows you um the sound it's like a huffing sound that kind of thing so the bulls were huffing and they were snorting and they were trying to show off to these guys. Ferdinand knew that they wouldn't pick him and he didn't care. So he went out to his favorite cork tree to sit down. He didn't look where he was sitting and instead of sitting on the nice cool grass in the shade, he sat on a bumblebee. Well, if you were a bumblebee and a bull sat on you, what would you do? You would sting him. That is just what this bee did to Ferdinand. Wow, did it hurt. Ferdinand jumped up with a snort. He ran around puffing and snorting, butting and pawing the ground as if he were crazy. The five men saw him and they all shouted with joy. He was the largest and fiercest bull of all, just the one for the bullfights in Madrid. 
So they took him away for the bullfight day in a cart. What a day it was. Flags were flying, bands were playing, and all the lovely ladies had flowers in their hair. They had a parade into the bull ring. First came the bandoleros with long, sharp pins with ribbons on them to stick in the bull and make him mad. Next came the picadores who rode skinny horses and they had long spears to stick in the bull and make him madder. Then came the matador, the proudest of all. He thought he was very handsome and bowed to the ladies. He had a red cape and a sword and was supposed to stick the bull the last of all. Then came the bull. And you know who that was, don't you? Ferdinand. They called him Ferdinand the Fierce, and all the bandoleros were afraid of him, and the picadores were afraid of him, and the matador was scared stiff. Ferdinand ran to the middle of the ring, and everyone shouted and clapped because they thought he was going to fight fiercely and butt and snort and stick his horns around. But not Ferdinand. When he got to the middle of the ring, he saw the flowers and all the lovely ladies' hair, and he just sat down quietly and smiled. He wouldn't fight and be fierce no matter what they did. He just sat and smiled. And the bandoleros were mad, and the picadores were madder, and the mad one was so mad he cried because he couldn't show off with his cape and sword. So, they had to take Ferdinand home. And for all I know, he is sitting there still, under his favorite cork tree, smelling the flowers just quietly. So that is the story of Fernadad. Um, as we keep reading it, I want you guys to think about the different words. Usually when we're reading a story, sometimes there's words we don't understand. Ms. G showed you some videos about some words you didn't understand. But also, there were other words in here that I'm sure you were just like, what did they just say? I don't get it. So like, one of the words they had in their story was this part. And it says, let me get a good view so you guys can see it really well. He liked to sit quietly and smell the flowers. He had a favorite spot out in the pasture under a cork tree. Now, what does pasture mean? Well, they said he had a favorite spot in the pasture under a cork tree, right? And the cork tree, and it was his favorite tree, and he would sit there all day and smell the flowers. So listening to the words and looking at the illustrations, right? I could say that a pasture, I know, I know the trees are outside, and I know flowers are outside, and I can see that he's outside. So maybe sitting on the pasture or picking a favorite spot is all of this part. So a pasture must mean maybe like all that grassy area. So this is what you do in your head when you are come across a word that you're not sure of and you're like, I don't know what that means. Look at the pictures, listen to the words, and then you can get an idea because that's what a pasture is. It's a part of the grass, right? It's a nice grassy area. And I figured it out because I listened to the words and looked at the pictures. That's all there is to it, friends. So, um, 
for now, what we're going to do is do our shout outs. Super exciting. Now, friends, I know it's a little blurry. I know it's a little low. But the thing is, friends, the fact that you guys were able to do this, I can already see this is Skyla and she's wearing her uniform. She even put it on the board. Look at her. But friends, even if it's blurry, Miss G can tell and it matters if Miss G approves, okay? I know it's hard to see it on this and it's okay, but just remember you guys are doing an excellent job. Bam, Skyla, awesome job. She just read what she said. She was pointing to the words as she read it. Good job, Skyla. I love that you were wearing your uniform. You didn't have to if you couldn't, but that's okay. It looks great. Good job, Skyla. Next up, we have Marquise. And this is him showing the picture after, showing what he wrote. <laughs> Excellent job, Marquise. I'll just put you right here. Great job. I love that you turned it around. So you know we couldn't see it while you were reading it, but since you turned it around, we were able to see what you were talking about. Good job, Marquise. And I love the fact that you were able to say, you picked a long word too, communication, and you said it so clearly. Yay, Marquise, my friends are doing so good. And yay, Skyla. Let's see who is up next. We have Nevaeh. Okay. Trey, where are you? Trey, where are you? Awesome job, Nevea! Wow, you colored and you glued? Oh my goodness! So friends, you know what? This is why Miss G wanted to do this. I know this was a little hard for friends, but let me tell you, you guys did such an excellent job and I knew you could do it. I knew you could do it. So I am so proud of you guys. Good job, Nevea. She was talking about how trains have changed. Now we have Gabriel. Gabriel is a little low, so we'll play Gabriel again a little bit later, friends, okay? Um, Miss G will have Gabriel's stuff ready, and she'll make sure that he's ready to go. Now we have Ariana. Gabriel, we got you, okay? No worries. You're going to come up later. Arian. Good job, Ariana. So Ariana was showing how things have changed over time with the bathrooms and everything. And then you look how she's standing. She's smiling. She did such a great job. Thank you, Ariana. You, I mean, Arian, I'm so sorry. Arian, 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 Ari, you did great, okay? You did so wonderful. I love what you're wearing. You did such a good job. And you were so clear in what you had to say. Um, 
So friends, I since the computer is being a little funny, I think I can play it right here so you can see what Gabriel did. I just want you to know this always this makes me smile so much you guys did such a great job I'm so proud of you I really miss you guys I love you guys have a great day